Hello and welcome to The Exchange. Amanda is away tonight. I'm Danielle Bokov. Just when you thought borrowing couldn't get any cheaper, one of America's biggest banks predicts the Bank of Canada could soon move its main interest rate even closer to zero, and you can thank the U.S. A new Bank of America Merrill Lynch report claims Stephen Polaz is, quote, handcuffed by the Fed because the U.S. Fed's next move could tie the hands of our central bank. The authors say the U.S. is on the eve of a rate hike. Historically, that would likely mean a rate hike in Canada, too. Today, though, it could motivate a rate cut, according to the report, because we're not as close as we used to be. In the early 2000s, a 1% increase in U.S. growth translated into a half a percent of growth here. Now, it only translates into a quarter of a percent. And a rate hike here poses bigger risks. While low oil prices are spurring growth in the U.S., they're grinding significant portions of our economy to a halt. And household debt to income is 163 percent in Canada versus 132 percent in the U.S. According to the authors, a U.S. Fed rate hike will, quote, tighten financial conditions in Canada, which will handcuff the central bank to a state of continued monetary policy easing. The Bank of Canada could ease by another 25 basis points, most likely in October this year, bringing the rate to 0.5%. Emanuela Enenadger is the Canada and U.S. economist for the Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, and joins me now with more on the report, one of the co-authors of the report as well. Emanuela, thanks for making some time for us today. Absolutely. In recent years, we noted the fact that uh, Canada's growth has tracked U.S. growth to a diminishing extent. Is that sort of a, a short-term trend in the, in the wake of subprime, or is it something that you see as the long-term future of this country? Um, I think it's something that's not just, that didn't just start with the financial crisis or with subprime. Uh, it's something that's been happening for the last 15 uh, years or so as the currency had appreciated notably during the commodity super cycle and as you saw a notable erosion in the manufacturing sector. So if you go back to the 90s, late 90s, manufacturing was almost 20% of GDP. Today it's closer to 10% and manufacturing is very export oriented. So given the shrinking share of the factory sector and the economy, Canada isn't quite as levered to the U.S. as it was before. Now, stronger U.S. economy is going to be a clear positive for Canada. It's just not as much of a positive as it was in the past. And how much of that uh, phenomenon is being exaggerated by the fact right now that we have lowish oil prices, right, which tend to have opposite effects. It tends to help the United States and it tends to be a weight on the Canadian economy. That's exactly, that's exactly right, and that's a very key point. Um, during a period of falling oil prices, uh, typically over time you would see an improvement in the U.S. economy. Now that obviously has spillover effects to Canada, but for Canada, a net energy exporter, uh, weaker oil prices are definitely uh, a negative, and we're, we're certainly seeing that in the data. So that's another factor that's going to have Canada and U.S. growth diverge quite a bit this year. I, I mean, it's interesting. J.P. Morgan recently called uh, Stephen Polaz an optimist-in-chief for the country. What do you think of, of our central bank governor's sort of rosy projections for the economy? Um, I think he's, yeah, he's very optimistic. It's interesting. Uh, about a year or so ago, he was citing a serial disappointment in the global economy. Um, but he's, he's, he's uh, more recently kind of taken on a more positive tone uh, looking at the U.S. economy that appears to be a growing above trend uh, and also citing the fact that he thinks the oil shock will be very short term. So, um, you know, am I in that camp? No, I actually think that the shock from weaker oil prices is going to have a spillover effect to other parts of the economy. And although manufacturing will improve uh, under the support of a stronger U.S. economy, I think it takes time and it's going to be a much more gradual process. So. Growth will pick up, but it's not going to be um, not going to be a, a solid rebound or, or anything that's uh, that's really hitting it out of the ballpark here. All right. So if you're right in terms of the ramifications for monetary policy in in both countries, let's talk about what that means. First of all, uh, in terms of Canadian sovereign debt, if we have a situation where the Bank of Canada either sits pat or cuts while the U.S. raises, how much of a ramification do you see or impact do you see? Well, um, I think that the, the key channel will come from interest rate expectations. So um, once the Fed starts to hike, I think markets are going to price in um, rising interest rates in the U.S. over the next couple of years. Um, and so interest rates are going to be rising in the U.S. They're also going to be rising in Canada given correlated fixed income markets. And as a result of that, you're going to see financial conditions tighten in both Canada and the U.S. Um, so I think that's really the key transmission of how the Fed impacts Canada. Higher interest rates in the U.S. is going to mean higher interest rates in Canada. Not by as much, um, 
but that's sort of like across the curve in the five year, sort of 10 year uh, maturity. And that's what affects mortgages in Canada. Yeah. And as a result of those tighter financial conditions, I think the Bank of Canada is going to want to stay very, very accommodative and even cut rates if growth disappoints. Okay, so you could have a situation where mortgage rates are actually sort of forced higher because of what's happening south of the border. But even though the Bank of Canada actually is, is cutting it, its own rates, what then is the net effect on the Canadian dollar? Well, I think if the Bank of Canada cuts its own rates, and that's going to help to prevent mortgage rates from rising too high, uh, and hence prevent a notable tightening of financial conditions and uh, a notable slowdown in the economy. So it's sort of that kind of offset um, in that sense. Uh, what happens to the Canadian dollar? Well, uh, the Canadian dollar would, would depreciate uh, would depreciate quite a bit. I think we could lose another five, uh, seven cents or so uh, on the Canadian dollar relative to the U.S. dollar in that scenario. I still think on that, um, that kind of a scenario where you see the Federal Reserve hiking interest rates um, and the impact on interest rates in Canada rising, uh, even with the Canadian dollar depreciating, I still think it's going to be a net tightening of financial conditions for Canada. And so it is exerting a bit of a headwind overall uh, on the Canadian economy. In the same way that QE was a positive for the U.S., in the same way that policy easing was a net stimulus for the economy, taking away that easing, taking away that stimulus is going to hamper growth a bit. It's interesting we're having this conversation today when the factory orders in Canada were actually good and the consumer sentiment numbers out of the U.S. were, were quite weak. If the U.S. finds itself driven to hike rates, is that going to be out of concerns about containing growth or is it going to be more of a concern about inflation? Um, inflation is not a concern at all in the U.S. In fact, inflation is kind of going in the other direction. Uh, when you look at the Federal Reserve's preferred measure of inflation, uh, it's well below 2%. So um, I think that if the Fed decides to hike interest rates, it's going to be sort of of the view that uh, the labor market is tightening, the unemployment rate is falling, growth probably won't be sensational in the second quarter, it's going to be okay. Um, and then if they see that sort of pick up, uh, then that would motivate them to hike probably in September. So I don't think we're going to get rip-roaring growth necessarily in the U.S. It'll, be, it'll probably be decent, maybe around 3% uh, later this year. And that's going to motivate those rate hikes. I think inflation is, is quite soft in the U.S. All right. We'll leave it there, Manuela. Thank you very much. Thank you.